Hey guys, welcome back to 90 Feet From Home. Today we're continuing our, today we're gonna continue our exploration of the postseason, and we're gonna talk about what happens if teams heading into the postseason are tied. And what would happen if there's no obvious winner of a division or no obvious winner between wildcard teams. Uh, this is sometimes referred to as a 163. So the episode will probably be called Game 163 or Tiebreakers or something of that sort. So there are a lot of different kind of ways that two teams can get tied at the end of a season and we're going to get into it but it's important to know I think ahead of that according to MLB rules which team would get home field advantage because this is kind of unique and I wanted to cover it first and then we'll get into all the scenarios. I'm not going to get too much into three and four team ties because they're very very rare and I might touch on that a little bit at the end of the episode. Anyway who gets home field advantage if there is a tie between either wildcard hopefuls or division winners? They'll be either determined by their head-to-head -head winning percentage during the regular season, higher winning percentage in intra-division games, and this is games against division rivals, so within either the East, Central, or West division of their league, higher winning percentage in intra-league games. This excludes any interleague play or games against teams that are in the opposite league. So it would only apply, say, this team is in the American League, League, only their play against other American League teams would count towards this total. Higher winning percentage in intra-league play in the last half of the season, or that same option plus one. Basically, as you continue down this list, you're not going to use all of these. You kind of go on to the next one only if you're still tied as the previous one happens. So, so if it, two teams are tied and they happen to also have the exact same winning percentage at the end of the season, you would go on to the second option and on to the third and on to the fourth and on to the fifth as needed in order to pick a particular team. So I know that's a bit complicated, which is why I wanted to jump on it first thing. Um, but there are definitely tiebreakers in place to kind of figure out who gets home field advantage for that one-off game. And now we're going to get into the different scenarios that would lead to one of those one-off games or game 163s. And it's called a game 163 because there's 162 games in the regular season. So this would be a kind of one-off sudden death match on the Monday following the end End of regular season play. So in what instance would we see one of these games take place? If two teams are tied for the division championship and the losing team would not qualify for a wild card spot, if it's a two club tie for division champion and wild card, what would happen here is one game would be played, the winner of that game would then be the division championship and the loser would get one of the two wild card positions. A two club tie for division championship and a tie with an outside of the division club for the wild card. Oh boy. So this results in actually two games being played. The first between the two division rivals in which they would determine who then wins that division. And then a second tiebreaker game between the losing team of that series and the other club outside that was tied for the same record to determine which of the three clubs then goes on to actually getting that wild card position. So, I mean, I'm not gonna get into all of the situations where this could happen because there are so many variations where clubs can be tied, but you get the idea based on those couple of examples of how they would figure this out, how home field advantage would be figured out, and then kind of how you divvy up those additional tiebreaker games until you end up with a division champion for each of the three divisions and two wildcard teams. Now what happens if you have a three-way tie for a division championship? Well, using the home field advantage metric that I kind of started the episode off with, you would have basically a designation of an A, B, and C team based on one of the records of, that we talked about at the beginning of the episode. So first the A and B teams would play each other and the winner of that tiebreaker game would then go on to play team C and the winner of that tiebreaker game would then be declared the division champion. Oh my god, I can't remember the last time there's been a three-way tie for a division and it won't happen in 2019, thank god, uh, but that is a lot of tiebreaker games. <laughs> In the off chance that there was a four-way tie for a division title, it would go very similarly in that you would rate them, you would have clubs A, B, C, and D, A and B would play each other, C and D would play each other, the winner of each of those series would then go on to play each other, and whoever won that final game would then be declared the division champion. And I honestly don't know if that's ever happened, but there are definitely rules in place to allow for it. So whew, there you go, guys. Most recently, as far as tiebreakers go historically, there were actually two 
Game 163s in 2018, both in the National League. And it was a competition between the Brewers and the Cubs for the NL Central and the Dodgers and the Rockies for the NL West. In that instance, the Brewers won in the Central and the Dodgers won in the West. And the Dodgers actually went on to head to the World Series, which they lost to the Boston Red Sox. But I think it kind of goes hand in hand with what I mentioned during how the playoffs work, is that the small sample size of those games can make things go any way. The Dodgers had to compete to the very end to even be eligible for playoff contention and went all the way to the World Series. So that's pretty impressive. Previous to that, there were quite big gaps historically between game 163s being played. So having two of them in a single year was actually pretty crazy. Uh, prior to that, it was the Tampa Bay Rays who won one in 2013 to head to the postseason. And before that, a big heartbreaker that I as a Detroit Tigers fan will never forget was the 2009 game 163 between the Tigers and the Twins, which the Twins won. Sorry, Twins fans, I'm betting that's a big celebration moment for you, but it just makes me sad. So there you go, guys. Tiebreakers and game 163. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up down below. While you're down there, hit subscribe and remember to ring the bell if you wanna be notified every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday when a new episode goes live. And of course, you can follow me on social media where I'm at 90 feet from home on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So until next time, guys, we'll see you then.